Okay, it's time for the Brooklyn Mess Hunter video. And I was only made aware of the big, big troubles that were happening there when someone sent me some links to what was being said on the Neighbourhood Watch Facebook page that revealed some pictures that looked incredibly similar to all the damage that had been going on around Barara. The locals in Brooklyn had been very observant in witnessing who was hanging around prior to all the damage and destruction being done at this beautiful location. Let's read what they were saying on the Facebook pages. From an annoyed and concerned resident. Whilst Friday's night storm left evidence of a washed out event down by the swimming pool, unfortunately the filthy feral swine were back there again last night leaving the whole place a disgusting mess of broken glass, graffiti, bottles and cans strewn everywhere, and that was just the outside. The council toilet cleaner told me that inside the toilets had been trashed yet again, smashed bottles everywhere, a dozen shoved into the toilet bowls, a huge amount of graffiti covers every wall within the men's. These fools have more money than sense as I picked up numerous unopened beer bottles and even a few cans of bourbon around the place, all of which is now in the rubbish bins. The council cleaner also took photos from inside the toilets, which will go to council, but tells me the parks and gardens section are responsible for the pool surrounds. It's high time council installed cameras to catch the pigs responsible. From that read, you learn this is not a one-off event. Locals down there have witnessed this park being trashed over and over. Let's read some more off the Facebook. Evidence this morning that the feral drunks had returned to Brooklyn Swimming Pool last night. Empty, strewn everywhere, but the worst thing I cleaned up was a broken bottle with sharp edges in the sand where the tide could cover the danger. There were also empties scattered along the foreshore back to the station including an empty of that red vodka I've seen previously. So from that read, we learn the Brooklyn Reserve has a small pool area. In fact, it's the perfect place for very young children to learn a beach environment. We all know broken bottles and children do not mix. And we also understand now that this area isn't far from a train station. Being close to a train station can attract the good and the bad. Let's read more from the Facebook these kids are from both Barara and Brooklyn, as I heard. The police need to be down there making a presence like they did at Barara. Hmm, did they make a presence at Barara? I'm not that sure. Sorry, let me continue. These kids are old enough to know better and old enough to be charged. I'm not sure about that. Sorry, let me continue. Maybe council can put in CCTV as it's getting ridiculous. Some of those are Barara tags. Yes, that's exactly right, because when I was sent the pictures of the damage in Brooklyn, I could identify the Barara tags immediately, and those tags have been going on in Barara for months and months and months. There was a fair bit said on the Neighbourhood Watch Facebook and other community Facebook pages. Some good details were coming out. Obviously, people in Brooklyn have been very observant of what was going on. And what was nice to see was on the Neighbourhood Watch Facebook page, there was lots of detailed pictures of the damage that was done. And I think that's very important to do because that will also give you a picture of who was there and if they are coming back and causing more damage in the future. Unfortunately, I've learned that these vandals are creatures of habit. They're often grabbing the same things to have their parties with. And maybe now it's time to take a look at Brooklyn in relation to other things. The previous Mess Hunter video was at Cherry Brook, and that was where that park was trashed. And that park had a, a problem because of its location, and I pointed that out in that Mess Hunter video. Sometimes some locations have a problem because, well, it's easy to get away with stuff. Or maybe another way of saying it is, the chances of getting caught playing up are minimised because you've got multiple ways to run away. And if we go from Cherry Brook and we head right up north to Brooklyn, well, halfway between them is Barara, and there's been a lot of mess hunter trouble there over the year. And Brooklyn and this reserve is unusual because the reserve is on a peninsula. There's a road that goes around the foreshore, but there's not many places to go if someone's after you. There are a couple of rat runs that go up very steep terrain up to the top of the hill. But if you're mucking around there, it would be very easy to be caught. Now... 
I suppose you're wondering, where are the police stations in relation to Brooklyn? And this is the problem. Hornsby Police Station is too far away. It's south of Brooklyn. You've also got Woi Woi Police Station. It's north of Brooklyn, but it's also a long drive if you had a call and you had to come and see what was going on. And it's also the same for Gosford Police Station. Too far away. And it leaves Brooklyn in a bit of a dark hole when it comes to a fast police response when there's trouble in the area. So the locals there have to be very vigilant. They're doing a very good job at taking photographs of things that they see that are not normal and they're putting them up onto the local Neighbourhood Watch Facebook page and there's a fantastic timeline of events going on and you can see repeated activity and problems in the area. Brooklyn is a very beautiful area. This park and reserve is stunning and it's also special for another reason. Let me read another Facebook post related to the mass vandal attack that this video has been focused on. This read is going to expose the lowest of the low styles of people. Okay, here we go. They really need to leave the possums alone. It takes so much effort to raise and rehab them once the little ones that come in with no fur end up trusting humans. It's killing me seeing these little assholes abuse them. There's at least 15 possums at the baths that will come up and eat from your hand. There were other comments on the Facebook page detailing uh, what had been going on. It was just a shocking read. I would not bring any more into this video. I think you get a grasp from reading what I've just read to you. Uh, this activity exposes the fact we've got people there, or a person there, or maybe multiple people there who really need help. The Australian brush tail possum is a native animal to Australia. It's illegal to keep them as pets. They are a protected species. You don't see them during the day. They are a nocturnal nighttime animal. They like to live up close to the dwellings we live in. They like to get into the roof cavity of your home, but they can become very accustomed to humans and over a period of time, they can come up and you can hand feed them. Now, when they're little babies, they are super cute. They are the softest, most fluffiest thing you can ever put your hand on and Brooklyn Baths have got a special thing going there where the possums have become accustomed to humans and they interact with the humans at the time when there'd be baby possums around and one thing I noticed when I was down there taking the video of Brooklyn was all of the critters in the area had no fear of humans you could basically walk up to everything that was around and if the possums there have become accustomed to human interaction and being fed by humans when someone who's really nasty and really bad appears, it's going to be a very, very bad night for a possum. Now, only a, a few months after this mess hunter video, I did notice in the Lout area in Barara, I saw something very unnatural, and I found this when I was doing my cicada study of the cicada season of 2020-2021. And I saw a group of cicadas that would been, I'll just say, tinkered with. It's not a very nice thing to find, and again, it connects to that style of person who would possibly do something to a possum that would come up to you looking for a feed. It's just the darkest thought you could have in your head. It's completely horrifying. I'm just hoping the mongrels who are messing around with the possums at Brooklyn Pools get done and put away for life. So the dark secret of what's been going on at Brooklyn and Brooklyn Pools is out. This video is roughly 10 months delayed by the time it gets uploaded to YouTube. And we all know that 2020 and 2021 have been tricky years. Right now in Sydney, we're entering, I think it's our third month of hard lockdown. I can't go more than five kilometers from my home. I would like to go back and see if the park at Cherrybrook has been repaired from the firebomb attack that happened there. Maybe someone from Cherrybrook, if you're watching this video, can tell me if the park has been fixed up. And I'd like to go back to Brooklyn, but it's more than five kilometers away from my home. I had heard that there's renovations going on in that area. Maybe someone from Brooklyn can say to me, hey, this is happening in the Brooklyn Pools area, and it's much nicer now. But what really needs to happen down there, and this has been the cry all over the Facebook pages is, we need cameras in the area. Cameras are going to resolve all sorts of problems that happen in these fairly recluse places that people get into to have mischief and they know they can get away with stuff because the authorities are so far, far away. 
I took a lot of video of the area around the Brooklyn Pools, the peninsula area there, and also going back to the train station, then it's a great place to go. The fact you can get there by train, you can grab some food, you can wander up. It's a very nice walk up to the peninsula area, and you can have a really, really enjoyable day, and it's not going to blow your wallet apart. Everywhere you look in this environment, it is completely beautiful. It is completely stunning, and it's the most fantastic place to go on a very nice Sydney day. It'd probably be fantastic to go there when it's pouring raining as well. It truly is a hidden gem of the northern section of Sydney, and I do live quite close to this. I'm within a 10-minute drive, and I've totally underappreciated it. I've only gone there once people said, hey, Leo, there's trouble there. Maybe you want to go and take a look at what's going on. And I'm very glad that I did. I do like making those little intro pieces to the Mess Hunter videos. This was a bit of a challenge because I needed to find the right piece of music to have that clash of the beauty of the place versus the horror of what the vandals have done. I spent a good half day searching the Kevin MacLeod royalty-free music site to find the right piece of music to pull off the clash of the beauty versus the horror. It's almost like Brooklyn has a Jekyll and Hyde personality. There's a Brooklyn during the day that looks stunning and then at night time there can be this very dark element that can come in and cause all sorts of havoc. Looking at the Neighbourhood Watch Facebook page, that's tricky for me because I'm not on Facebook so I can I don't really get to go in and see it in the true native way that people who can log in can see it. It was great to read the concern of the local people in Brooklyn there, and also, I'll say it again, how observant they were in detailing who was going to the park here, the activities they were doing, and what they were carrying between the train station to the park. When you see kids carrying quite weighty bags from local shopping centres, I can tell you one thing, they're not carrying bottles of milk. In time, I'd like to go back to Brooklyn and see what happens with the possums at night. It sounds amazing what happens there. And I'm hoping that now you've seen Brooklyn and think of the good things there, that you'll go down there and visit the place. It's probably the best kept secret in Sydney. And now I can tell the world what a fantastic place it is. Very easy to get to and you'll have an incredibly stunning day. Unfortunately, there's only three more Mess Hunter videos to do. The next one will be taking a look at tree vandals, and that is completely brain dead activity. Then there'll be a final look at Barara, and the problems here do not go away. There's been a bit of a fight between people saying we shouldn't talk about this at all on the Facebook pages versus people saying we should basically expose name and shame. It's a very interesting debate. Then the very final one will be a revisit to the abandoned hardware store basically a year after the first time I went in there, and I can say to you this, it is completely and utterly trashed. Well done, boys. Your work never fails to impress me.